Hey guys, what if the Force wasn't an energy field created by all living things? What if the Force isn't your midichlorian count? What if instead, it's a power that comes from another dimension? Well, that was an idea George Lucas was exploring when working on The Empire Strikes Back. On A New Hope, George Lucas had to write the screenplay pretty much himself, which he hated doing. So, when it was time to get working on the sequel, he hired veteran science fiction author and screenwriter Lee Brackett to help him develop the story and write it. And I am going to go over the transcripts from that conference. Today, I'll be focusing on the original way they wanted to use Obi-Wan again, which led to a conversation about the source of the Force and revealed familiar as well as very different powers it could allow its user to utilize. I may bring back Ben eventually. I'll have to bring back his voice. May also bring back the ghost of Ben, but not the person of Ben. Luke is learning the Force through a combination of things, rituals. The idea that you can see things in another dimension would work great, that Ben is now part of the Force, and he can be there with Luke. As Luke goes through this experience, he begins to see Ben in this other dimension. He can begin to see his ancestors in this other dimension with the Force, which would mean we could then bring them back in a different kind of way, says George Lucas. Ben will explain to Luke that he will gather all these powers, but he can't use them for evil, or he will succumb to the dark side of the Force. If you use it for evil, it will start using you. It is a Force for good, but the more you become addicted to it, the more it controls you, and the side that controls you is the bad side. The side that you can control is the good side. The good side is a passive side, and the bad side is an aggressive side. Two sides of the Force. One's aggressive, one is passive in relationship to things. Now in one of his notes, George Lucas wrote, The mood of a warrior calls at once for control and abandon. The Force commands you and obeys you. Unity of opposites. If you use it well, you can see the future and the past. You can read minds and you can levitate and use that whole netherworld of psychic energy. Now the netherworld of psychic energy. So I guess that means George was considering that the force was a power that comes from another dimension. So instead of coming from all living things, it comes from dead things or the afterlife of sorts. And Obi-Wan could kind of channel the force's powers into Luke or more like he from the netherworld would allow Luke access to its various powers. But it was up to Luke to use it for either good or evil. That's my interpretation of it anyways. What do you guys think about the whole ancestor thing? He says Luke can bring them back but in a different kind of way. What do you suppose that means? So force ghosts can return, maybe zombies, or he can bring them back to life, but they can all interact in this other dimension. Now he was originally going to bring Anakin and Obi-Wan back to life in Return of the Jedi at the very end in one of the original scripts. If that was still a power the force allowed, could Kylo bring back his ancestors, which included Han, Luke, and his infamous grandfather? Now, for those of you wondering, I don't think this should be able to apply to just regular humans. I think it should only be accessible to Force users. Now, for those of you who have viewed my videos on Return of the Jedi, know that there were various drafts where Lucas did bring Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Anakin back to life, as I mentioned. Now, what I wish would have happened is if J.J. would have used this in episode 9. I mean, you know, we did hear Luke say no one's really ever gone. And that's always something I really wanted to see was for all Force Ghosts to show up at the end of the film, but unfortunately, eh, spoilers, we didn't get that. There are rumors that the scenes were shot, you know, Qui-Gon Jinn, Mace Windu, all the Jedi, even Ahsoka, but apparently it wasn't in the film. Who knows, maybe we'll get it someday, or maybe we won't. Now something I always wanted to experience in Star Wars, you know, to see on film, not so much experience, was to see the characters such as Luke or Anakin interact with those that are dead. So I don't just mean interact with Force Ghosts, but interact with the next realm. So something that I wish could have happened in Episode 9 was, well, we all thought Luke was dead in Episode 8, but what if he just learned how to sort of teleport into the next dimension, maybe become a Force Ghost, but then learns how to come back to the real world? And he does this sort of like Gandalf the Grey did to become Gandalf the White. Almost a different person, but, you know, still himself with all new powers and abilities and learns a completely new version of the Force and what it really is to be a Jedi. Or just a Force user. I feel like that was a missed opportunity or just a realm that we could have delved into, but we didn't get to see that. I feel like if Luke would have woken up in this netherworld of the Force, 
then maybe he could have seen, you know, his father and Obi-Wan and Yoda and all the other Jedi, and they could have just taught him different things. He could have been able to do certain feats of strength and powers and exercise his abilities in ways that he's never done before, or we've never seen before, in this netherworld of the Force, this other realm. Almost like a planet, but its own galaxy, maybe. Either way, let me know what you think of this original draft that George was thinking up, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you, always. Now, fulfill.